Hi there everyone, welcome to the September 2022 HO scale layout update. As you may know, I didn't put out a layout update last month as by the time I got back home it was already the end of the month and I didn't have enough time and I was on a trip to the east coast so basically I didn't have enough time so this layout update is going to cover August and September. So what you just saw was a manifest freight train that I had set up with brand new Union Pacific Dash 9 which I did a review on a few weeks ago and my SD75i. Now you may be noticing that the CN100 logo is gone that's because I actually removed it just last night I want to take off the decal and take out the every child and other thing here not as a bad thing but I just wanted to revert this thing back to normal as you may know I purchased it with a 100th anniversary logo but I kind of want it to be a normal SC75i, so I had to take it off. Sorry to the person who ever did that. But you can see the new Union Pacific engine is still on DC. You can hear it humming in the background. If I shut off the scale trains engine, you'll hear this thing, which you'll hear in a few seconds. So you can hear the DC motor cranky because I don't have a DCC decoder in it yet I purchased this thing with DCC however the seller sent claimed they sent the decoder out to another person in the wrong package so still waiting on a decoder from them it's been about two months and I followed up with the seller a few times about the decoder but they claim they're still looking for it however at this point I kind of believe that there just wasn't a decoder that came with this and I may have been scabbed but overall it's a really nice engine I got it for pretty cheap you can see nice details I'll have a cart up here for the review that I did of it but let's get on to new rolling stock that I got every month I usually get a couple pieces of rolling stock so this month I got this Atheron Ray to Roll CN boxcar I went to a garage sale with a good friend of mine and this was only ten dollars believe it or not so definitely had to pick this up it's got metal wheels plastic couplers rolls really well still gonna have to put metal couplers on but you can see it's a fairly good freight car and the second car that i got was this intermountain kit it's a union pacific two bay hopper and this was only fifteen dollars at the same garage sale so you can see very nice detail it's got photo etched walkways on the top it's got lots of nice plumbing detail which I had to assemble myself this was a kit so I had to build all of this and that wasn't the only kit that I got I also got this Kansas City Southern three bay hopper I've always wanted one of these hoppers especially the KCS one since I really like the, simp the simple design. I like the color and I just like how these things are designed. It's also as a kit, I had to build it all. You can see all the ladders and everything. I also did a bit of weathering to it just to hide up some of the glue marks. But overall, another very good kit. So here's a new little scene on the layout that I've been working on recently. It's a crew changing platform. So I decided to make this area here designated for crew changes as you can see i got crossing gates set up here i've got walkways and i've got crews in the center and you may be wondering where i got the two crossing gates from so i'll get to that right now so as you may have known this crossing gate here was originally placed upside down like the overall arm section here so this piece instead of facing going like down and then flat was going up and then flat so I got a new one, and this time I built it right, and it actually operates, which is pretty cool. 
So the old ones, I cut off the arms and I was basically just left with the cross, like the crossing without the gate. So I thought that would make a pretty good use for my crew chain spot down there since those places usually don't have gates. It's usually just the crossing because there's really no point. And that's what I did with it. Also, I got this small sign here that reads, do not stop on tracks. Trains may exceed 80 miles per hour. That was there last month, but just in case you haven't seen last month's update, that's what it is. There's also been a lot of work on the locomotive shots this month. As you can see, here's my small roster right now, but I've got all the plaster laid down. This is all plaster here. I've sanded it all down, made it nice and smooth. Uh, I've started to cut the grooves for the locomotive flanges. Haven't done all the tracks yet, but the front tracks are done. It's not wired yet because I'll have to have a electrical block here for the whole yard so I can cut it off so not all the engines are drawing power at once. But you can see in here we've got a few projects that I'm working on. Over here is an SD45 rebuild that I'm doing. And down at the far corner, this is a slug that I'm working on. It's a GP9 slug. I, by the time I started working on this thing, Rapido had just announced that they were building their slugs, but I don't really feel like spending that much. So I had an old GP9 laying around. I decided to completely cut the whole frame off the body. So I'm left with the frame now and I decided to custom build the whole shell. So. This right here is a shell piece that I'm working with. It's all PLA plastic, sheet styrene, as some people call it. But this is basically what we're working with. So I haven't gotten around to painting it yet, but that'll be done. Also, the yard is coming together. As you can see, it's a work in progress, but I got a few new switches. I got one, two, three, four from the yard sale there were only four bucks a piece they were atlas switches very good quality very good so started building the yard we've got three main tracks here and there's going to be a bigger staging yard at the back so this is going to be for all the mainly important cars that i usually run on my mixed freight so i can do operations with them and the yard back there will be sort of like an overflow yard for all the other cars and one final thing that I did this month to the layout was rusting the track. So you can't really see it right now, but once I shine this light on it, you can see I've rusted all of the main lines in the front because that's really all you're going to see. I got the front track done and also the back track done all the way around both main lines. And this took quite a while, but it's always something that I've been wanting to do and needing to do as this just increases its prototype to the real world trains and the results turned out pretty good i just had a small cup with brown paint and water you can still see the container in the top right corner there but i basically just used brown paint and a bit of red paint mixed it a bit and thinned it down with some paint thinner i used ak paint thinner and this is the results. They It dried pretty fast and the paint was just cheap dollar store paint that you can find at the craft store or dollar store. And this is the result you get. So I think it was pretty good. So this is all for the September and August layout update. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and like always, thank you all so much for watching.